Gauteng MEC for Health, Nomantu Nkomura Lehoko, says plans are underway to implement the health ombuds recommendations on the Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital. These recommendations include hiring a permanent chief executive officer for the hospital. Dr. Arthur Manning is part of the team that is implementing the health ombuds recommendations and he joins me now. Dr. Manning, appreciate your time this afternoon. Just outline outside the hiring of a new chief executive officer, what are some of the other recommendations that have been made? Thank you very much, Hugo. I'm, I'm very pleased to say that after the ombuds report, significant progress has been made. And one of the biggest issues was around infrastructure because of the age of the hospital and some of the problems faced. And um, compared to when that report was done to now, issues like um, sewage and water has been firmly dealt with. Issues of electricity outages no longer occur. We have also been removed from the um, load shedding schedule. So the hospital has um, secured um, electricity and, and power for um, those periods of time. Um, there's also been significant development on improving clinical services as well as in improving the skill of some of our staff um, as, as issues were identified in the Ombud report. So the progress has been significant and with the additional resources which province has given for um, issues like refurbishment of um, some of the major buildings, the hospital is well on its way to recovery right now. Now, one of those things, I mean, you, you talk about staff and there's been suggestion, in fact, uh, that the a competency uh, test be done for fit for purpose uh, assessment of the leadership in, in, the, in, the, in the hospital, as this has potentially been uh, one of the challenges. How far have you gone with that exercise? Yes, yeah, so we've done skills audit in some of the major departments like human resources. I think that the, the context of some of the um, ways in which staff work um, is important as well. So there are significant shortages of staff. Um, and so the existing staff, besides some of the skills gaps which we've identified, they also have huge workloads, which does compromise some of the work that they do do. But we have done a skills audit. We've identified areas that some staff need improving, mm. and we've embarked on um, some of the initiatives to improve their skills, some of them being um, letting them register the National School of Governance to do some courses. We've dealt with issues like ethics. We've dealt with some of the supply chain gaps that have been identified through benchmarking and having um, head office come and do some on the job training for some staff members. And then um, the additional assessments, which will be done not inside of the hospital, but from outside, just to look at the levels and skill of the kind of middle management team, um, which again is, is a function of not just um, some of the skills issues they have, but also the fact that their um, levels of post as well as the kind of work that's required of them um, needs to be addressed. And through the reclassification of the hospital into a tertiary hospital, the additional resources will come not just in the form of budget, but in the form of additional senior level posts, which will allow the hospital to appoint uh, more senior managers in the capacity that is needed in order to deliver some of the work better than it's being done right now. But the, the existing management team is a strong team. They certainly, in terms of skill, are um, delivering above some of their capacity as well. And so I think it's, it's really just a matter of the overwhelming workload and the uh, um, additional support that is needed in order for them to perform as well. Dr. Manning, reports were carried uh, a few months ago where pregnant women were sleeping on the floor. What leads to that sort of situation, firstly? And secondly, uh, has it been addressed? Is it not going to happen again? The hospital has got a very good reputation. It has had for many years, and it's in fact always been a hospital that has um, striven for excellence. And so um, one of the issues around the services at the hospital is that um, patients come from outside of our um, drainage area to get services. Mm. Um, certainly um, over 40% of patients um, shouldn't really be coming to us, but they do because the hospital has the kind of reputation it has. In addition to that, the hospital is situated in Region C and drains a significant area of the population that doesn't have other 
either district hospitals or other midwife obstetric units that can deliver patients. So from clinics, they are coming directly to a specialized hospital. And so the numbers overwhelm us. We are the second busiest maternity unit after Chris Honey Baragwanath Hospital. And so some of the long-term issues which are being addressed is to establish the um, midwife obstetric units in uh, other clinics so that some of these patients no longer have to deliver with us. We also are negotiating with other hospitals in our area, such as Yusuf Dar and Leratong Hospital, to take some of the load from some of the clinics, particularly in the north of Johannesburg. And then the department is engaging in a process of um, looking at converting the Discoveries Community Health Centre into a hospital, which will then again drain the um, numbers that that um, come from us. So we still have an overwhelming um, problem of overcrowding. We mm. deal with it in a number of ways. So obviously we make sure that we um, run the labor ward um, as efficiently as possible. We also make sure that we run a second theater so that cesarean sections are being performed on a continuous basis. We also refer patients out to other hospitals like Charlotte Makweke, like Leratong, sometimes to Bathakoa in Germiston. But interestingly, I often find resistance, even when we do offer patients the opportunity to deliver elsewhere, they sometimes opt to wait on the chair another hour or two rather than to be transferred, which speaks to the the confidence they have in the service that we're delivering. So long term, the overcrowding will be dealt with when we establish these midwife units, um, clinics like Westbury and, and Florida, which is in our area. Those are areas that the province is developing into delivery units and the Discoverers Hospital, and those will deal with the, with the overcrowding in a more significant way. Dr. Manon, before we carry on with some of those recommendations from, from, the, from the SIU and the stuff that you're implementing, you, you've talked about the staff, you've talked about how understaffed you are and overworked they are. So let's talk a little bit about staff morale at the moment while you're implementing some of these changes. And are, they, are you likely to have budget to, to hire more staff? Is it something that you see in the foreseeable future? I do foresee it. I know that the province has been working hard to add additional nursing posts and budget to us. In the last engagement we had, they identified a number of posts as well as budget, and I think it's the process of um, creating those and getting the necessary approval. So I'm positive that um, additional posts and budget will come through for, for nursing particularly. Morale is um, low. Um, we, ex we see um, burnout in some of our nursing units, and we are um, dealing with that. One of our um, external partners are uh, um, actually doing a lot of counseling and recognition of burnout and how to deal with those issues, and they're actively working within some of our nursing units at the moment. We also have a wellness committee which is um, doing small events just to keep um, staff morale up, but I think some of the issues about communicating well and keeping people informed about what's happening and providing the kind of support that, that some felt was not there before, I think is making a difference to, to the kind of energy that we see in the hospital now. Dr. Arthur Manning, part of the team that is implementing Health Ombuds recommendations at the Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital, appreciate your time this afternoon.